So big time review today. We've got uh, slopes, rate of change, and uh, writing linear equations. Rate of change is might be a little bit new, a couple examples, but uh, for the most part, this is all seventh, eighth grade stuff. Um, slope we know is the change in y over the change in x, also known as the rise over run, or the difference in y's over the difference in x's, uh, which is m the slope. All right. Uh, we know a couple of things. Positive slope as you Follow the line, it goes up. Negative slope, follow the line from left to right, it goes down. Zero slope is a horizontal line always, and I always think of it as that zero. If you look at the word zero, the top of the Z follows that horizontal. And this is an undefined slope, but I like saying no slope because the word N or the word no with the N follows the vertical line. Easy way to remember it. So we've got a couple of different forms for linear equations that we use. One is slope-intercept, the y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. x and y are just variables. And the standard form, ax squared or ax plus by is equal to c. a, b, and c have to be integers. a is always got to be greater than zero, and there's no common factors. So let's do some problems. We want to find the value of w given the following conditions, and we've got a slope of negative 6 over 17 passes through the point. So we're going to use the difference of y over the difference in x's at this point. Um, I'm going to go 2 plus 9 over w minus 5 is equal to that slope. So basically, we're going to clean this up a little bit. 6 over 17 equals 11 over w minus 5. And then we notice right now that we've got a proportion. So we're going to take and do a cross product. I've got uh, negative 6w plus 30, and then 17 times 11 is going to be 187. And then I subtract 30 from that, I get 157 equal to negative 6w, and w is 157 over 6 of the negative type. Uh, 157 divided by 6. Let's see if that gets us a fraction and no go. Okay, so this is what we've got. Uh, write the slope intercept equation of a line. So same situation. I've got two points here. I'm going to go y2 minus y1. So 7 minus 5 over negative 2 minus 3. And that equals my slope, which is 2 over 5 negative type. And then I know y equals negative 2 over 5x plus b. Plug in either one of the two points because both those points have to go through this line with this slope. And I'm going to use, doesn't really matter actually, so let's go with uh, 7 equals negative 2 over 5 times negative 2 plus b. So that gives me 4 fifths is equal to 7 plus b. This is 6 and 1 fifth is equal to b. So y equals m, which is negative 2 fifths, x. I'm going to keep this in fifths, so this is plus 31 over 5. The parallel perpendicular lines. We know parallel lines will never intersect, therefore they've got to have the same slope. Whereas perpendicular lines meet in right angles, which means that their slopes have opposite reciprocals. Opposite meaning if one's negative, one's positive, or vice versa, and then reciprocals um, is self-explanatory. So, we want to write slope-intercept, uh, the line that is going through negative 4, 2, and is parallel to this line. Well, if it's parallel, it has to have the same slope, which means we have to find the slope of this line. So that's 2y, negative 7x plus 17, y equals negative 7 over 2, x plus 17 over 2. And now we know that we can go over here and say, well, I have a new equation of y equals negative 7 over 2, x plus b, because this new line has to be parallel, meaning that it has to have the same slope. Just write parallel line right here. And then we have to plug in this point, negative 4, 2. So I have 2 negative 7 over 2, negative 4 for x, trying to find the b value, 
That reduces to a negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 7 is 14, plus b is equal to 2. Negative 12 equals b, and therefore y equals negative 7 over 2x minus 12. So now we've got the same problem except it's perpendicular. It's written in a pretty nice form because right off the bat we can say, okay, the perpendicular line is going to be y equals the opposite reciprocal, which is 9 fourths of a negative variety, x plus b. And then I pop in this point, 4 equals negative 9 over 4 times 1 plus b. And if I add 9 fourths to the other side, that's about 2 and a fourth, so that's 6 and a quarter is equal to b. And then y will equal negative 9 over 4x plus 25 over 4. In this problem, we're asked to write an equation of a perpendicular line to this line, having an x-intercept of negative 3, which is basically a fancy name for the point negative 3, 0 that it goes through. So the first thing we'll do is just isolate the y value. I have 3x minus 24 is equal to 2y. So 3 halves x minus 12 equals y. I need a perpendicular. So the perpendicular slope is 2 thirds of the negative variety because we have opposite reciprocal slopes. So then I have the y value, which is 0 is equal to negative 2 over 3 times the x value, which is negative 3 plus b. I solved this. Those 3s reduce. Negative and negative is a positive. So 2 plus b equals 0. Negative 2 equals b. And therefore, we have y equals negative 2 thirds x minus 2. Okay, so now we're going to write the equation of a line passing through this point here, which is perpendicular to a line of x equals negative 2. Well, you've got to know what that looks like first. So x equals negative 2 looks something like this line here, where x is equal to negative 2 everywhere on that. So if I go to 18 and negative 44, that's somewhere over here. And now I want to find a line that goes through that and is perpendicular. So something-ish here. All right. And now I know if this is a x equals line, then the perpendicular has to be a y equals line. And y is always the same on this, so the y value has to be negative 44. All right, so in this last example, we're asked to find the average rate of change for a function f of x over a given interval. Now, a couple of things we have to remember. Average rate of change is simply the slope. So we're going to need a y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is going to be our slope. And in order to do that, I need two points, but I don't see any points over here. I've got this thing called an interval. Now, again, we have to remember that these are x values. So this is like x1 and x2, which means I need my y values. Well, we know f of x is equal to y. So if I plug these x values in for that function for x, I'll get my y values out. So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking f of 3 minus f of negative 2 over 3 minus negative 2. All right? And when I do that, f of 3, I believe, gets me 24. f of negative 2 is, I think, 14. And that's all over 5, which is... 10 over 5, or 2. And that's all there is to it.